We're Liz and Dennis, food-loving, full-time RVers on an adventure to eat, see, and RV our way through North America. After having some fun on the shores of the Great Lakes, we make our way to Traverse City, where we get to know Michigan's up-and-coming wine country. Doesn't get much better than this. Bike and kayak our way to several breweries. This is so fun. And eat all the tasty food. So join us and get ready to explore one of Northwestern Michigan's best cities. Welcome to Traverse City. We are so excited to be showing you around here over the next week. It is definitely the top of the list when it comes to places we've wanted to visit in Michigan because it has so much to offer and things that we love. It has great restaurants, distilleries, breweries, vineyards to visit. So we are going to be showing you around over the next week, eating and drinking a ton. And today's adventure starts with kayak, bike, and brew. We're gonna be doing a tour where we go to tons of breweries, kayaking and biking. What's not to love? And we're off. I'm notoriously a bad bike rider, so we'll see how this goes. I'm also pretty useless when it comes to kayaking. Hopefully, I'll either get progressively better or progressively worse as we drink. This is beautiful, and it's such a perfect day. Going into our bridge now. This is cool, this is such a bikeable city. The river runs right through it, connecting to several bays. So there's water pretty much all around. Jump, jump! Ah, they didn't jump. Made it to our first stop, Right Brain Brewing. I might have gone a little ham, I'm excited. And after that hot bicycle ride, I'm ready to cool down with some beer. Naughty girl. Tastes naughty. We didn't realize they weren't three ounce pours like most sampler or flights. They're six ounce pours. Whoops. Wow, it smells just like Pad Thai though. You know how pad thai is peanutty and kind of funky with a little bit of spice and, and cilantro? That's exactly what this smells like. Liquify pad thai, and this is what it is. We've got eight minutes maybe, and I still have a half a beer left between the two of my flight samples. Oh, only six minutes, I'm being told. Excuse me, six minutes left on the clock. Chug, 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 chug. <laughs> you don't chug a stout. You just don't. You don't chug a stout. And we're back at it. On the way to the second brewery. Luckily it's only a five minute bike ride. We'll work off some of the beer we just drank and they have food. It's a good investment at this point in time. Stop number two is the filling station. We have quickly ordered our pizza so we have enough time to kind of fill up our bellies after our very excited six, six ounce pours at the first stop. And this is also Tony, our guide's favorite brewery of all the stops. So it's kind of says something because this is his job. And he just drinks beer all day and takes people on tours. So I think it'll deliver. So I did Russian roulette. I got the bartender to pick them for me. So I'm drinking 14, 8, 3, 10, 9, and 12. In other words, he has no idea what he's drinking, but that might not be a bad idea. Oh my God. Even if you just come here for pizza, it has peach, gorgonzola, prosciutto, garlic with a balsamic drizzle. Wow. Now it's time for kayaking. Also, I'm so thankful for my sun ski shades. They're made from recycled plastic. If you don't know about them, check them out. We'll have a link in the description below. I love this. This is a really fun way to see the town. No? Like, what else are you gonna kayak to a brewery?
very rarely are you ever gonna bike to your brewery. Very rarely are you ever gonna kayak to your brewery. And I'm pretty much gonna say on this tour, you're not gonna do both. <laughs> so it was really fun to be able to kind of see the city from a different perspective. It's a really cool tour so far. Stop number three is Rare Bird. This is right in the heart of downtown. Very good vibe. Water. Thank you, sir. Super fun experience. I absolutely love this tour. It gives you a totally different vantage point of exploring this city, and I thought that was really, really fun. If you're only here for a little bit of time, this is definitely a must-do activity. We're gonna be showing you more of the city starting tomorrow. Let's go. We are on time. Really? You are four minutes early. Wow. First time ever. Hunter, what's up, dude? How's it going? Nice to meet you. Yeah, welcome aboard. Thank you. I am so excited for this. Who is ready to drink some wine? I am. Me too. <laughs> I think we're in the right spot then. We've partnered up with Brew Bus, who offer different wine tasting and brew tours. There's so many vineyards you can explore in this area, especially on the peninsula that juts above Traverse City. While we could drive there on our motorcycle, it's not so responsible. So this way, we can drink, we can enjoy, we can taste, take in all the vibes, and we have someone taking us around to do so. So if you're coming here and you're into wine, I definitely recommend this. I have a feeling today's gonna be a great day. Our first stop isn't a vineyard, but a bottle shop. This is a new bottle shop called Lake District Wine Company. It's right in the heart of Traverse City, making it a great stop for you if you're coming through the area and you aren't gonna be doing a full wine tour like we are today, because they have a huge selection of different wines to choose from everything from old world to new world, and they have a really awesome selection for wine specific to Michigan. Hi, I'm Elena. Welcome to Lake District Wine Co. So what we really wanna do is have like one or two different wines from each winery so that but so there's not competition necessarily so if someone's coming in for like let's say an unwooded chardonnay or a naked chardonnay we'll have one to two to choose from maybe one from each each peninsula but we'll have a wide representation of all the variety that we can do oh, that's and nice. you know the, the techniques new zealand the loire valley bordeaux are all on the 45th parallel i don't think people realize that we are also on the 45th parallel and that we can make amazing wines just like they can we're just a newer wine region um, so we're kind of like on the fringe is what I like to say. Like we're about getting the recognition that we deserve now, um, but there's still a lot more to come. We're gonna be doing our own tasting here where we're gonna be kind of understanding some of the different varieties that you can find here in Michigan for vineyards we're not going to be visiting on our tour. So we are starting the celebration off with Bubbly uh, with Mavi Sparkling. He is the founder, father of Sparkling in Michigan, he's the has the only sparkling house, and a lot of other vineyards now do sparkling or other other winemakers, but he was the first. And this is us. It's a it's a blend of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Chamborsin. Um, actually, uh, could you do it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's open. Mmm. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to show you a late harvest just because I think either you love or hate late harvest. I'm. You love? Oh good, okay. It's delicious and I think it's such a fun food pairing. Like for, for me particularly, I'm not a huge sweet sweet wine drinker, but I think it's so fun to have after dinner with like, because I'm not a dessert person. So I'll have a little sip of this and then a, like a cheese plate. And I think it is the best. Do you think I don't normally drink white wines, especially not those that are on the sweeter side. And I would say it is on this definitely sweeter, but it's still very good. Oh, I didn't even try it with the cheeses. Uh, I actually enjoy that. So I was say, yeah, I just enjoyed blue cheese for the first time. You know what? It's not very strong. Dennis, you're probably cost. It changes everything. Holy moly. Oh. oh. This is why you come to things like this. Because I would have never, I'd never buy this. But when it's done with someone who's knowledgeable and they know how to pair things and they know how to describe it so you can really enjoy it for its full flavor. It changes everything.
Our second stop on our brew bus tour was in Grand Traverse Commons, an old state psychiatric hospital that dates back to the late 1800s. The asylum used the ideology beauty is therapy as an inspiration for the grounds which had over 1,000 identical rooms and cottages all with windows of views outside and a working farm. After operating for close to seven decades, the asylum was shut down in the mid-1900s after the birth of drug therapy and a decrease in demand for state-run facilities. The building sat empty, slowly deteriorating for years, but are now being revived and converted into high-end condos, affordable housing rental units, and retail shops. The villages at Grand Traverse Commons is one of the most popular places to visit in Traverse City. Here, you can souvenir shop, dine at one of the many restaurants, take a historic asylum tour which ventures into the underground steam tunnels, and visit one of the breweries or wineries on site like we did. Next stop, Left Foot Charlie's Barrel Room, located in the root cellar of the old hospital and the perfect spot for our next tasting. I'm gonna start out by pouring a sparkling wine. This is the Blanc de Blanc. So it's made from 100% Chardonnay, done in the traditional champagne method. It actually was developed in 1939 in Germany um, as a cross of Riesling with Trollinger. There, there is very little acreage of this planted in the U.S. and it is a lovely dry white wine. Mm -hmm. It's like a totally new wine where I've, I've never, never had, had any a, of these a white wine like this before. Flavored. Um, you're gonna get some pepper in the finish. Hunter, our amazing driver, knew that we would need some sustenance for the rest of the tours because we still have two more stops. So he stopped at a spot called Spanglish and he got us some delicious American Mexican, kind of like Tex-Mex inspired food. We got tacos, we got tamales, we got burritos. We're gonna <laughs> eat some food. And we made it to our third stop, which is 2K Farms. They specialize in ciders, which is kind of a new thing for us. So we're getting a whole little flight. We get to choose at least five different ciders. Here at 2K, we are one of the largest producing orchards in the Midwest right now of heirloom cider apples. So we're growing a lot of French, British, and old American styles of cider apples, which a lot of cideries don't really dabble with and or can't grow. Um, a lot of these apples are found more on like the East Coast and West Coast. So it's kind of definitely our niche of what we're doing here. The ambiance here is absolutely A++. I mean, you're overlooking the bay here as you sit amongst the orchards. It doesn't get much better than this. I will say that. Ooh. Wow. Totally not what I expected. It's not super sweet like I think a lot of people probably think about ciders. This one is extremely tart. All right, I might be a cider fan. When you come to a prestigious place like this with heirloom trees, it's kind of hard not to like taste the quality. Like these people care about their ciders. I'm like this is craftsmanship. I also just want to mention that Hunter keeps coming up giving us 15 minute warnings. How does time fly so quickly? We are just loving this experience and it's such a bummer every time we see him, we're like, don't go away. Go, you can't be coming to tell us it's time to go yet. Three for three. We are just doing so good so right now, it's awesome. But I'm really loving the diversity of this tour. It is pushing us out of our wine tasting comfort zone. We would have never chosen to come to a cidery, like literally ever, if we'd seen it on a map. So I'm really enjoying that this tour is kind of giving us the best of what this area has to offer and really embracing different styles of wine. One more stop. Let's go. Our final stop on our brew bus tour was Rove Estates. Like much of Michigan, Rove Estates is a young vineyard, having planted their first vines in 2012 and opening their doors in 2016. But despite its young age, Rove has won several awards for its rosés, reds, and white wines, and is helping put Michigan on the map as a world-class wine region. You know, in Michigan, we don't always produce reds every single year. Um, we are a very, very cool climate, and sometimes the 
it's just a little bit too cold and we don't get the kind of aromas and flavors and tannins and structure that you would get um, from a warmer climate. And so we tend to make rosés instead. But the years that we do do reds, they're phenomenal. They're a perfect example of cool climate. They have a lot of flavor, great crisp acidity, great for aging. When you do find them, they're phenomenal and get them because they run out fast. <laughs> I'm trying a new wine I've never had before. It's a German name, Gewürztraminer. If you've had it, let us know in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you not? I'm trying so many new wines in this experience and I'm loving it. Our last tasting. It's like so bittersweet. Today was perfect in every way. Hunter, our driver with the group bus, was amazing. 10 out of 10. How much did you buy? We might have gone a little overboard. Listen, all the places were so good. Maybe a little too much or just the right amount. Who's to judge? We're not judging. There's a lot of amazing food in Traverse City. It's definitely grown to be known as a foodie town. We've done lots of exploring for its food scene so far. Unfortunately, we haven't shown you much of it just because it hasn't been great conditions for it. Our first night, we ended up going to a place called Little Fleet, which is like a food truck outdoor area with a bar where you can kind of choose from different food vendors all join together eating different things and have some fun there was live music it was a great ambiance but it was really loud that day that we were there so we didn't really capture much for you and there are a ton of other restaurants that we've been recommended that we'll have in our maps for our patrons if you're interested in finding out more information about where to eat in traverse city but one of the places that is the most recommended by a long shot is the cook's house they do seasonal, fresh, local ingredients. They change their menu all the time to reflect what they just have available to them. And it is supposed to be absolutely superb. We ended up booking reservations for this like the second we knew that we were coming to Michigan and Traverse City, I called and they were booking at least six weeks out or more. So if you decide to come here, I highly recommend making reservations well in advance. Paycheck, getting that paycheck. <laughs> we are selling one of our investment properties. If you didn't know, we invest in real estate. It's one of the ways we support ourselves as we travel full time. And we're selling a property that's gonna make us a nice little profit. Yeah, closing's on the road. This is how you do it. You go to a UPS, you get documents notarized, and you send them off. Today is our last day, and we're trying to just take it all in. This place is amazing with so much to do. There's so many more breweries and restaurants parks and vista points that we're not going to be able to enjoy this trip so it's definitely a place we'll be coming back to in the future and if you're coming here make sure you give yourself enough time we were here almost a week and it still wasn't enough Finishing off an incredible meal. Milk and honey, which has organic, non-GMO, grass-fed cows, so they have dairy options if you would like that, but they also have vegan options, and they use keto sweeteners like monk fruit, which I just think is amazing. I got the super dark chocolate, so rich and tasty. Then it's got lavender honey. Mm. Perfect way to end a night. We made it to Mackinac Island. It is so charming, absolutely beautiful. I definitely get it, I do. The watercolor here never ceases to amaze me. It's also my birthday. Greg and I have to apologize to the viewers of UTRV that every time Dennis and Liz try to go and take a picture of a food, we've already eaten it. So there's a lot of pictures that are missing. And we do apologize for that. This is one of those things. 
we ate it before they could film it. Oh, ah. Nope. Our first stop isn't actually a vineyard, it's a bottle shop. Lake Wine, oh, Lake District, I know. <laughs> okay. That's why twins. Um, Cameraman, always the last to get anything. It's like I could sit on a porch and drink it at noon. <laughs> <laughs>